Welcome back to part two of our halter judging video. Now it's time to put into practice all the information that we've gathered so far with a class of yearling quarter horse fillies. Go ahead and hit pause on your video and take some time and notes while you inspect these horses from a profile view. Now here are the same four horses displayed from a hind view. And here are the same four horses displayed from the front. And again, please feel free to hit pause and take as much time as you need to inspect the horses and, and get adequate notes. And let's take one last look at a profile view while you make your final decision and place the class. Now again, this is a class of yearling quarter horse fillies. And the official placing of this class is 2, 3, 1, 4, with cuts of 4, 3, and 2. Again, the official placing, 2, 3, 1, 4, with cuts of 4, 3, and 2. And I'm going to go ahead and talk through this class and explain a sample set of reasons as I do. I'm beginning with an opening statement. Someone may use, sir or ma'am, I place this class of yearling quarter horse fillies, 2, 3, 1, 4. Simple and to the point. A top pair, again comparing those first two horses. I begin with 2 over 3, as she best combines balance and muscling. Her shortness of back, length of underline, and depth of heart better combine to give her a more balanced appearance when viewed from the side. She has a longer, cleaner neck, that balanced into a smoother, more sloping shoulder. She was heavier muscled at every angle. She had a greater amount of muscle expression from her forearm and pectoral region. When viewed from behind, she was wider from stifle to stifle and had more bulge to her inner and outer gaskins. In addition, she was longer hipped, carrying more muscle over a lower portion of her quarter. Now moving into a grant statement, a grant three, the second place horse. So I realized that the Palomino was more nearly level. Now you're going to fault the second place horse. But I fault and place her second as she was weak backed. Then you would move into a middle pair. My middle pair was three over one as she was a higher quality individual. She was more feminine, showing more shape and quality to her face and carried that femininity back into her thinner, trimmer throat latch and neck. Her longer, cleaner neck tied higher into more desirably sloped slope shoulder. She was also neater and sharper at her withers. And now you would grant one or that third place horse. I understand that one had more strength behind her withers. And now you're going to fault one, but she was thicker in the crest of her neck and stood uneven from croup to wither. So I left her third. Now advancing into my bottom pair, it was the buckskin over the bay as she was smoother blending throughout, being more correctly balanced and cleaner made from end to end. She was a larger volumed individual having more tone and power of muscling. She was wider from shoulder to shoulder while having a deeper, more prominent V. She was more powerfully muscled in a hindquarter and dropping down into more flaring gaskins. So now you would grant that fourth place horse. I realized that four had a longer, cleaner neck. And then you would fault the fourth place horse. But I left her in fourth as she was the lightest muscled, narrowest maid of the class. Thank you. 
In our next video, we will focus on developing a set of oral reasons and explain in more detail what they are and why they are so important. How to efficiently take notes while judging a class. Organize a format that makes reasons easy to remember. How to use the appropriate terminology when building a set of reasons. The tips on presentation and practices. How reasons are scored and resources to create and improve your reasons. And speaking of resources, um, I'd like to again share with you a list of publications here that I would encourage you all to review and, and make available to members during your team practices. Um, our PA4H horse judging contests and horse show rule book is, is very important. Uh, the different breed association rule books and judging manuals, a lot of them are available online for free that you can download and print yourself or call the organizations and they may make them free to 4-H members. Um, also, you know, other universities and colleges have uh, judging manuals themselves. And again, we are also in the process of continuing to develop this public box folder that has materials for 4-H volunteers, coaches, and members who are interested in horse judging. Uh, this would be a great resource for a team who's also just getting started, and we'll continue to add more information into this folder as, as time progresses. Um, once again, I'd like to thank Megan Carroll, the 4-H educator from Luzerne County, uh, for providing some of these materials and making this available. And there will also be a live a knowledge contest question and answer session offered on Wednesday, March 27th at 6.30 p.m. in a Zoom meeting room. And this is an opportunity for educators, volunteers, coaches, and team members to log in from home or from their county extension office and ask any question that they may have about any three of our knowledge contests. And again, if you have any questions about this information, please feel free to uh, reach out to me directly, or you can contact any one of us listed here. Thank you again for watching.